Welcome to the Itiski YouTube channel, Itiski Tutorials. This is episode 4 of the Shoot 'em Up mini series in Introduction to Video Game Developments. In our last episode, we finished up all of the gameplay, but everything still looks really bland and flat, and everything's made up of cubes and cylinders. So, in this episode, we're actually going to be creating some 3D models to make our game look a little bit more like an actual space scene. In this episode, we're going to be using Blender, which is a 3D modeling software program that's free on both PC and Mac. Unity works great with other 3D modeling software programs as well, but Blender is going to be the 3D modeling software program that we're going to be using in the Ultimate Game Dev tutorial series, which there is a Kickstarter running for right now, so links in the description below to the Kickstarter page and more information about the Kickstarter. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. So let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, so here we are inside of Unity, and right now our game looks a little bit bland because everything's made up of cubes and cylinders, and we want to actually make these things look like spaceships and uh, alien spaceships. So let's actually open up Blender, and this is what we're going to be using to create the 3D models of the alien spaceships and the player spaceships. Um, so I opened up a new scene and I just deleted everything inside of it. Just press A twice until everything's selected and then press the delete key and then go ahead and uh, click on delete. And then your scene will be empty like this. And also every time I press something, like move the mouse wheel or press something on the uh, uh, number pad or anything along those lines. Um, it's going to be shown in this bottom left hand corner right there. So if that doesn't show up in your version of Blender, that's perfectly okay. I just have that there just so that you can see what I am doing. And also because Blender relies uh, so much on keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to have a list of all of the keyboard shortcuts that I use in this particular tutorial in the description below. And just remember when you're using Blender, for the most part, just go to Google and type in Blender and then keyboard shortcut and then uh, whatever you're looking for and it'll probably be within the first search results. Um, so if you don't know anything, a quick Google uh, search usually shows um, what to do and how to find that. Um, and once again, I'll also have a quick orientation video where I'll just go over some really, really simple things inside of Blender. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's start with the enemy spaceship. So let's go to add mesh and let's uh, let's do a cube, I think. We'll, we'll create a cube. So here is our cube, and let's see, over here we should have the radius somewhere. Um, is this location? How do we change the size of it? Oh, well, I guess we don't need to change the size of it. We'll change the size of it inside of editing. Uh, and we'll go to, whoops, I pressed the letter Q. That's not what I wanted. Press tab to go into edit mode when you have the cube selected. Or you can go down here and you can go to edit mode that way. Basically, tab will switch you between the last two modes that you have entered. So in my case, it's edit mode and object mode. So let's go into edit mode and let's start making this look like in enemy spaceship. Um, so first of all, one thing about Blender is that right click is actually selected. Select. And to move stuff around, you can either uh, grab these arrows and move it, but it's actually faster to just press the G key, which I assume is short for grab. And then once you do that, you can hit something like Z. And in Unity, Z is forward and backwards, but in Blender, Z is up and down. But we'll change that in the export settings to actually uh, make the game actually or make our uh, enemy ship have the same orientation as it does uh, inside of Blender as it does in Unity. So we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit E and that stands for extrude. So we're gonna take this face and we're just going to extrude it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna press S for size. And then maybe I'll extrude it another time. Uh, maybe I'll actually extrude it one more time and then I'll select this face and then I'll extrude that. Um, and I'm just going to try to create kind of like a, a bit of like a Frankenstein uh, shape here. I'm just going to create like kind of just a really crazy, evil looking spaceship. Um, I'm thinking this way is going to be forward. So I'm going to have something come up along the back of it here. So I'm going to extrude that a little bit and select that face. And then I'm going to extrude that. And then I am going to press S to size it down. 
and then let's extrude it just a little bit there and let's have it have like a little thing that comes forward so let's extrude that and then maybe let's uh, size that on the Y axis and then make it like thinner like that um, let's put something over here because this is starting to look a little bit empty over here so let's extrude uh, let's extrude that and let's extrude it one more time like that and then let's size it down and then extrude one more time then extrude one more time and then size it up and then I don't know maybe we have some sort of like Frankenstein uh, TIE fighter wing from Star Wars or something weird like that um, so I'm not going to I'm just gonna kinda keep the like Frankenstein shape here and just keep this uh, very evil and strange looking and basically just extrude many different uh, surfaces like that. Um, let's see, let's let's extrude, uh, it's starting to look a little bit too big on that side. Actually here, let me select those two and then I believe if I press what Alt plus on the numpad, nope, that was totally wrong. Maybe it's just plus on the numpad, nope. Um, which was it? Was it Shift Plus? Or was it Control Plus? It was Control Plus. There we go. <laughs> yep, just got to keep on trying until you get it. So press Control Plus on the numpad, and then it just increases the selection. So I'm just going to pull that in a little bit. Um, then I'm going to select this face, and I'm probably going to pull that in a little bit too, because it's a little bit too big on that side. Maybe that looks kind of like a, a weird shield or something. Um, but let's see. Let's add just one more thing up here. Let's extrude that. And then let's scale that on the y-axis, and then go in like that. And let's extrude that, and then let's select that face, and then extrude that out. And I think there needs to be like one thing right here. So let's extrude that, and then let's scale that on the y-axis. Whoops, right there. And then let's grab it on the y-axis, and then move it over. Um, and then let's let's go ahead and grab it on the Z axis. Why didn't okay, it was supposed to say Z right there, but I pressed the, the letter Z on my keyboard. Alright, I think that's looking like a pretty cool looking enemy alien spaceship. So let's go ahead and save our project. So we can go to file, uh, save, um, and because this is a new project, we could do either save or save as. And actually, I am going to go up one folder, up one folder, and I'm just going to just find where I saved everything. So here's my big folder of stuff, um, and I saved it as ship games. So let's look for S, 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 it's alphabetized, there it goes, ship game. Then let's open up assets, and let's th uh, save it inside of this folder. So let's call this um, enemy space ship and it's going to be a dot blend file and unity does accept dot blend files so i'm going to go ahead and leave this as a dot blend file all right so then i'm just going to go over here and click on save blender file and there we go it is saved so now when we open up unity it refreshed and now when we go in here we should have a enemy ship model and there it is down there that's really small but let's drag and drop it into our scene so that we can really see what it looks like and let's give it oh it does have a position of zero 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 all right so it's a little bit big and it's kind of pointing in the wrong direction so let's fix that really quick all right so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go back into blender and here we have our enemy spaceship so if you look inside of unity our enemy spaceship is pointing this way but we want the enemy spaceship to point this way so we're just going to rotate it clockwise 90 degrees so let's go into blender and let's whoops wrong button let's hit a and then a again to select everything and then let's hit r for rotate then let's hit Z to lock it to the Z axis. And then on our number pad, let's, let's type in 90. Whoops, wrong direction. Let's hit the negative key. There we go. That's the right direction. And then hit enter. And there we go. Everything is where we want it to be. So let's uh, hit control S for save. And then let's save over where it was. And then when, when we go back into Unity, 
There we go, it's rotated in the correct direction. So now let's go ahead and just delete that and let's edit our enemy right here. So um, here I have selected our prefab for the enemy and here we have a mesh filter. So basically this is the mesh or the 3D model that actually determines what shape uh, our game object's going to look like in 3D space. And right now we have a cylinder. So let's click on this little target looking little symbol here. And in our list, we should be able to find, it should be listed as cube. Let's actually, oh wait, no, there it goes. Okay, it's listed as cube because we didn't name it anything else. Um, but as you can see right there, there's our enemy spaceship. It's not actually a cube. It just started off as a cube. So it's still named cube. So we could have named it something else. So let's double click that. And now our enemy spaceship uh, should look differently. Okay, there we go. I was just thrown off for a second because you had to click away and then click back in before that little image in the bottom actually updated. But as you can see, now it is an enemy spaceship. Um, so now let's actually go over and um, let's remove the capsule collider. So remove and now let's add a different one. Let's add, let's see, we want to go to physics and then we want a mesh collider and it should automatically detect what mesh we have the game object look like. And now it has a mesh that's going to basically create um, a 3D physical collider of um, the actual ship. So let's run the game and take a look at what this looks like so far. All right, so here we go. Here's the enemy and it is pointing in the wrong direction once again. Um, so let's go ahead and actually, um, I'll, I guess it, we could just simply uh, go to the enemy spawner right here and let's just rotate it around the x-axis 90 degrees. Uh, I think that's the wrong way. We want to rotate it negative 90 degrees because remember the enemy spawner will rotate the enemies um, in the same direction. Oh, actually I just remembered it will um, make the enemies go up if I do that. So. Actually, wait, no, I don't think it will. Let me let me give it a try, we'll see. We'll experiment. I think we can rotate the enemy spawner and it will rotate how the enemies will spawn. So I think now they will be in the correct direction. And yes, they are. And it looks like uh, the collisions look pretty accurate. Let's try just hitting like the corner of one. Yep, the collisions look pretty accurate. And if I go into one, I still explode, cool. Um, so those guys are a little bit big, so let's actually go to the enemy and let's change the scale to um, 0.7 on all three axes. So now it's just a little bit smaller. So now when I run the game, the enemies should be a pretty good size. Let's check it out. Yes, I like what that looks like. And if I let one run into me, I die. Perfect. Everything is working just the way we want it to. Okay, so now let's actually create a model for the player. All right, so I'm gonna go back into Blender and actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to object mode and with my uh, enemy ship selected, I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete it. And then I'm going to save, actually why don't I do that right now? So control shift save, there we go. And we are going to save this in the same folder but we're going to sh uh, save it as player ship player ship. So let's save that and it is empty right now. So let's actually stick something in here. So let's put our 3D cursor. So this is where something will appear like when we go to add and then we add a mesh. So let's go here. Uh, you can press N to open up this menu if you don't see it. Um, and then let's go to 3D cursor and set this to 0, 0, 0. And now our 3D cursor is right back in the middle. So let's go ahead and go to add mesh cube. And let's actually rename it right here. And let's call this player uh, ship mesh. 
So that way it won't be called a cube when we're looking for it inside of Unity. All right, so now let's actually go into edit mode and let's edit this thing. So whoops, totally wrong button. So click tab and now we are in edit mode. So while everything's selected, let's actually grab all of it and move it over. And then I'm gonna go over here to this uh, little wrench bar looking thing over here. Um, and I am going to select add modifier and we are going to go to mirror and we are going to mirror it. Uh, I thought it was on the x-axis, maybe. No, nope, I guess we're gonna uh, mirror it on the y-axis. And I think we want to do clipping, which I think it's supposed to say clipping, but let me drag this over. Yes, it's meant to say clipping, but it said clipping. <laughs> All right, so now that we have clipping selected, we can move this over, and then when these collide with each other, actually, let do that, and then I think when we pull it over, they kind of stick together. So this way, and this is pretty common in 3D modeling, this way uh, we only need to model one side of the ship, and then the other side of it will um, just uh, copy itself on the other side, so it just saves us work. So let's go ahead and start editing this thing. So I'm going to uh, drag this down, this is gonna be the top of our spaceship, so let's scale that on the x-axis, so I hit x. For some reason it's not showing up right there, but that's all right. Um, I'll just make sure to remember to say x. <laughs> um, and then let's see, if I move this over, will the clipping, yeah, the clipping thing still uh, applies. All right, and then uh, let's go back here. Let's extrude that, I think. Um, and then I think we're going to want to scale it. Let's just scale it evenly for now. Um, that looks pretty cool, I guess. Um, and then let's go over here. Let's extrude this, but then lock it to the x-axis and have it go forward like that. All right, and then um, let's go ahead and drag that over. And then uh, let's scale it on the z-axis. And then it's going to do that. And then that doesn't quite look right. So I'm going to rotate it on the y-axis. If you ever get confused which axis is which, just look at the colors and look at it says x, y, and z right there. It might be kind of hard to see in the video, but uh, you can determine which the uh, different axes are that way. So um, what was I gonna do? I'm gonna hit R for rotate, and then I'm gonna rotate it around the Y axis, and hit Y, and I'm just going to, I think I'm gonna rotate it like that actually, and then I'm going to scale it on the Z axis, and whoops, not quite like that, there we go. All right, now that's starting to look like a spaceship, it's gonna kinda look like that as we're playing it, and we're gonna have to rotate it, of course. Um, but I think we need some wings. Let me actually make it a little bit skinnier. I want this to look like a fast ship. So let's let's go in like that. Um, and maybe we'll have the wings come out of the bottom. Let's, let's just extrude it out of here, I guess. So extrude, um, and then I guess let's pull it in like that. Um, let's actually pull it up, that's a little bit too low. All right, that looks good. And then let's extrude there. And now let's select that, and uh, let's extrude outwards. Um, and then I think it would look kind of cool. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna grab this. Can I just drag it over? Yeah, that's what I want. I'm going to then grab this, and then I'm going to extrude it that way. It's gonna look kind of like a, uh, I can't remember, some Star Wars ship. Can you all tell that I watched Star Wars the other day? I'm making a lot of Star Wars references. Okay, now let's um, select line. So down here, you can select vertex, line, or face. Let's select line, and let's select this line, and hold down shift, and select that line, and let's drag those in to kind of give like an aerodynamic look. Um, and I think that's pr looking pretty good as to what we want our spaceship to look like. Um, but let's drag these lines down a little bit. So that one, that one, uh, and let's see what happens when I drag those down. Uh, those don't really look like wings anymore. Let's control Z, and then let's select that, that, and that, and then let's drag it down. Uh, yeah, looks kind of like a half tank, half spaceship. Um, 
But yeah, I think this is uh, pretty good for uh, the spaceship right now. Um, so let's go ahead and press uh, Control S or Control Shift S if you actually uh, if you haven't saved it as a new file yet, make sure you press Control Shift S. Uh, and then uh, later after that, you can press Control S, but I already did the Control Shift S. So I'm going to save over what I did. So now when I go into Unity, I should have a player ship. And yes, there is the player ship. So let's actually go to our player ship here. And then let's go to Mesh. And then when we click on this, there we go, player ship mesh. It's a lot easier to find this time. And let's double click that. And then let's zoom out and see what happened. Okay, so the rotation of this is quite off now. So let's actually go back into Blender. We're going to need to, let's see, rotate it that way and then that way. So let's see if we can get that right. So um, actually what I'm going to do now that I'm pretty much done editing this, um, uh, let's see, will this work? Actually, I think I can just go into object mode. Let's Let's do an experiment. So, uh, what way did I need to rotate it again? Let's go into Unity. I need to rotate it. Okay, so there, there's the front of the ship. So I need to rotate it counterclockwise when you're looking at the ship, and then when you're looking down at the ship, counterclockwise. Okay. So both. All right. So uh, we're going to rotate this along the x-axis, 90 degrees. Yes, just like that. And then we are going to rotate this let's see on the y axis 90 degrees nope negative 90 degrees okay there like that so let's save that and let's see what happened will it rotate the right way I don't think that rotated I think I need to actually rotate it inside of edit mode that's what I was afraid of oh well that's okay it's not the end of the world um, so what I'm gonna do is over here on the mirror modifier I'm just gonna hit apply so now when I go into edit mode, you can see that I can edit both sides independently now. So I'm just going to do that just to make the rotations easier. Um, so how do I need to rotate it now? This is always confusing. So let's select all of it and let's rotate it along the Y axis uh, 90 degrees. Um, and let's start with that and then see what happened inside of Unity. Okay. So now I just need to rotate it that way. So I need it to look up. So let's go back into Blender and let's rotate it along the Z axis 90 degrees. Nope, negative 90 degrees. There we go. And I think that's going to do it. So I'm going to save that again. And there we go. It is now looking in the correct direction. So let's go to our bullet spawn and just see if that's in the same position. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. We can leave it there like that. But now when we play the game, we're going to have a problem. Our ship is huge. So we don't quite want that. So let's just go to our player ship. And I think we can actually just go to this tool. You can also press R on your keyboard. And let's shrink it until it looks good on here. I think that looks good. Maybe a little bigger. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like that. I think we could also move it back a little bit. I think that would be good. All right, so I think that's good, but let's update the collider because we changed what the ship looks like, but we didn't change what it collides like. So right now it has a box collider, which let me see if I zoom in, if you can still see the box collider. I think, yep, there it is. You can just barely see it. There's a little box in there. So it looks like we're looking at a spaceship, but really, like when it comes to collisions, that little box in there is what actually detects collisions. So let's get rid of that. So we're just going to go to the box collider and then right click and go to remove component and then go to add component physics and then mesh collider. And uh, we need to make sure we set that to a trigger because the player needs to be a trigger. Um, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and run the game and see how well it works. So far, so good. Okay, those bullets are a little bit big compared to the player, but we can adjust that. Um, and so our bullets do shoot the enemies. So let's let the enemy hit us. Oop, we messed something up. So let's go ahead and go back and see if we can fix that. 
Okay, there we go. Just one little step that I forgot to do. What we need to do is both on the player ship and on the enemy, on their colliders, we need to, on their mesh collider, set it to convex. So sometimes when it comes to uh, rigid bodies and collisions, if something's not working, set it to convex. Um, and I'll show you what convex means when you go on the ship. So as you can see, I have the ship, uh, player ship selected, and then under mesh collider, I have convex selected. So if I don't have it selected, basically it, it um, it's kind of like a shrink wrap or something like that. Convex basically, basically makes it so the collision can't go in. And that just makes it work better with uh, the physics system and detecting collisions. So when you have uh, convex set to false, basically uh, the collisions will go into the crevices and everything in this. But if I set it to convex, it will only be on the outside. So that is what we need to have happen to actually have it work. And I'll just do a small demonstration just to show that it is working and bam. And I just got destroyed and the game will restart. And there we go. All right, and there is our game. So before I forget, let's make those bullets just a little bit smaller. Uh, let's set those to 0.4. So there we go, 0.4 on the X, Y, and Z scale. And let's save our scene so that it's the same way when we come back. And there we go, those bullets look a lot better that way. All right, so there we have uh, an enemy ship and a player ship, but they're still really, really gray and still kind of bland, but they're better than cubes at least. But uh, in our next video, we're going to be using GIMP and a little bit more of Blender, and we're going to actually apply some textures to uh, the enemy ship and the player ship uh, just to make everything look even more cool. So that is what we're going to be doing in the next video. Um, so yeah, once again, if you would like to know more about the Kickstarter, links in the description below to the Kickstarter page and information about the Kickstarter, that Kickstarter is going to be teaching you how to create everything from the ground up to create the video game that you see on your screen now. And that game is Embotrination and the name of the tutorial series is the Ultimate Game Dev Tutorial. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's everything for today. So until my next video, I will see you later and keep making games.